As quilters, sometimes we stay away from a particular method or technique, either because we don't know how to do it or we don't know how to use it. And in the hundreds of quilts that I have made over the years, I have never used a bias binding on a quilt. Well, I am here to tell you today that I am sold on this technique. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I have some pieces that I wanted to quilt for the holidays, and I needed a bias binding to go around the curves. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I started with this cute little square, and I wanted to get a curved binding on it that looks something like this. Well, the only way to get from here to here is with a bias binding. And it's not difficult at all, and that's the tutorial I'm going to show you today, because then I got really excited, and I made this giant hot pad. Oh my gosh, I love it, and it looks so pretty on the back as well. So let's go. I want to show you how to do this, and you can finish up some pieces around for the holidays or for gifts or, or for any time that you're going to love. So let's go ahead and get started. If you enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd love to have you following along. All right, let's get started. I want to show you this technique. I have my fabric all pressed and ready to go. It's a full fat quarter, 18 by 22 inches. I cut off the selvage, I make sure everything is square because we're going to make a bias cut and we want to make sure that the block is square so when we cut our diagonal that that is going to be on the true bias which is 45 degrees simply because it stretches better. And the idea for a bias binding is that it's going to go around curves easily. So what we're going to do first is line your upper corner here with your 45 degree line and you have multiples of these across your um, your cutting mat and so we're going to line that right in the corner see how that corner is right on the line and I'm going to take my ruler and I am going to follow that line all the way to the other side now this is going to be tricky because my ruler is not quite that long but what I want to do about a quarter inch short but what you can see is that this line here lines up on that 45 degree line where this lines up in the corner and that's where I'm going to cut. And then this line needs to come all the way down and line up with this 45 degree line. Now this is going to be the line that I'm cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here and cut from one side all the way to the other and I'm going to go right through that corner. Okay, so that corner's cut and now what I can do, I'm just going to take my little ruler, oh actually no I don't have to, let me show you another way to do this. Line this up with that line here and then the one inch line on your ruler with the next mark because these are spaced at one inch and we want to make sure it's lined up over here as well so we get a good straight line. And I only need to go about an inch, so this is going to line me up right there. Look at that. Oh, great. So now the next step is to make our first seam. We're going to make two seams. And all we do is we take this piece and flip it over right here. Now what's different about this than when you do it with just a 18 inch square is we have this extra bit of blockish fabric instead of just going ordinarily it would probably it would end let me find the corner here here to here and you wouldn't have that that square little um, block at the end but that's going to give us that extra strip and I know I'm going to need a lot so that's why I'm doing it this way so I'm going to line this up I'm going to put this square to square and I'll pin it now on this side that corner let me line this up, is going to meet with the edge. You're not going to have an overlap, but that's okay, because we are going to come in at a quarter inch seam all the way down. So let me go ahead and do that quarter inch seam, and I'll show you what we're doing next. And we're all set here. We have our two pieces sewn together. I've sewn the seam, and I've pressed it open, and this is what it looks like. So you're going to have um, two parallel lines. It's a parallelogram and now we have these nice bias edges 
on each side. So what we want to do is cut our fabric along those diagonal lines. Now you don't want to go along the straight lines, you want to cut across the diagonal. And you'll know you're going the right way because as you cross this line, you see how that seam doesn't go straight. If you're going this way, your seam is going straight. That's not what you want. Make sure you cut in this direction. So let me line this up on the grid. I do line it up on the grid even though I use a ruler. And that's simply as double assurance. Plus, my ruler doesn't completely go from one end to the other. So I sometimes keep my little one handy just in case. And what I'm going to do now is draw my lines. Now, this is a two and a quarter binding that I'm doing. I'm doing small pieces, so I'm using a, a smaller binding. If I do a quilt, I always use a two and a half inch just because I want that extra heavy duty edge. And when I do my quarter inch seam, it gets you know nice and thick around the edges. This, because they're smaller pieces, I don't want the binding to be incredibly dominant and be so thick and heavy around the edge that that's kind of all you see. Um, so I'm taking it just a little smaller. It's minuscule and it really isn't incredibly noticeable, but to me that's what I prefer. So the first thing I'm going to do is line this up at two and a quarter. Now this is great because I'm at this point I, I can measure all the way across because I have this line here. All right, let me get this back. I moved it. I'm going to put my ruler at two and a quarter right here and two and a quarter right here. Now, if it's hard to see your line, then use these outside lines. That's why I'm using the grid, because if I can't see exactly where I am or, you know, making sure that I'm straight, I line my ruler up with this grid and I know I'm in a good spot. So I am going to use, um, this is the water soluble and you can use an ink pen, you can use anything you want, but this will stand out pretty good. You know what, I think I will use an ink pen. I believe you'll be able to see it a bit better. So let's do that. Okay, ink pen, here we go. It'll come out darker. And so I'm gonna take it all the way to the edge here. And then I'm going to take it all the way to the edge here. Put this on my two and a quarter and two and a quarter, and then we'll just measure that off. Okay, so now I must have skipped a spot there. Just draw a line between those. Okay, with the first line drawn, we're just going to continue up in the same manner, and we keep measuring two and a quarter from this line. And so our two and a quarter mark should follow across that line all the way. And if you want, you can come in just a little bit to give yourself some space there. And what that does is bring you a little closer to this edge here. Um, so what I would do is I come here and I backtrack cut and it gives me a pretty straight line. And then here. So if you're comfortable with doing a short straight without wobbling, then, whoops, I wasn't supposed to cut that yet. Let's disregard that this is cut. Well, true to form, I made a mistake. I wasn't supposed to cut it yet, but we can work around it. Even though this is cut, I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm going to show you how this is supposed to work. Um, God bless y'all for hanging in with me. And I get so carried away and excited about what I'm working on that I uh, sometimes forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, so we have two and a quarter. And with a pen this time, instead of the rotary cutter, if you see me picking up the rotary cutter, throw something at the, at the screen and let me know. All right, now I'm gonna take this over and this will be two, quarter, two and a quarter down here, so that'll be an easy line to fill in. And I'm going to do a two and a quarter here. So I just continue this all the way to the top. And let me show you what we do when we get to the top. So I'll draw this line in. 
and I'm going to show you what we do at the end. Despite the previous snafu, we're going to be able to work through this. I just want to show you, I've drawn the lines one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five, and then we'll get line number six. But since this is not big enough, wide enough to make another piece of binding, we're going to cut it off. So I'm going to line my ruler up at two and a quarter, all the way across that line, and I'm going to cut this piece off. Now this will be a great piece, um, you know, scrappy strip piecing, things like that. And I have some projects that I'm working on, and this will work out really well. So I'm going to set that aside. Okay, now let me show you what we have. Ordinarily, we'd be working with a piece this wide, but I'm going to show you on a smaller scale and how this works, because it's going to be the same way no matter how many, um, how many strips you have. I'm going to actually try doing this with a yard. If I have a big quilt that I need or I use a lot of colors um, in the binding, or excuse me, a lot of strips for a large quilt in the binding, this would be a fun way to do it. So we have our cut piece. Our lines are all drawn. We're going to take one diagonal edge and bring the other over. But you'll see how when they cross over, the points are on opposite sides. So what we have to do is twist this. And we twist this to bring these edges together. Now the trick to this process is that this line lines up with this outer edge. Because what we're going to do is we'll start cutting here and then we'll have a beginning and an end and everything in the middle will be connected. So what I do is I bring this over to the edge and I just bring the drawn line there. What's important here is your quarter inch seam because you want to make sure these lines are going to line up here and here. So as we're cutting, we get a good straight line. Now, if I put this right here, it you know, I can't really see what's going on. So I've drawn these lines here on this on the top side of the fabric, the right side down here so you can see what I'm doing. And I want to place this line over this line so that I am approximately or as exact as possible one quarter inch. Now let me show you the the trick that I use. Here's my one quarter inch seam. All right, I have this lined up so they're like little flying geese, little triangles, okay? And what I'm going to do is if I'm over here, I can see that I'm off. I want these points to line up with those lines. And if this lines up at the quarter inch point, all I have to do is bring these straight up and I'm going to have my quarter inch seam allowance. So let me go ahead and put a pin in and show you how that works. I'll do it on both of these. Let's see how close we came. So when you pinch this with the front and back, we're going to open this part here. I can't really see. That's the hard part is being able to see through this. We need some transparent fabric. This blue tends to bleed through the fabric and it is water, or excuse me, yeah, water soluble, so it will come out. All right, so when I turn this back, can't grab it right here. My quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to take a pin out. It won't turn back. These almost exactly line up. So I'm going to move that right here. So see now my lines are nice and even and I have my quarter inch seam. One thing I do notice is that back one was a little more than a quarter. So you want these lines to line up and then put a pin in and make sure this is nice and straight. All right. There we go. And we come over here. Yeah, see that's hard with a pin in there. Sorry, I thought that would help. So what we're going to do is just overlap and then fold it back. And we want to make sure that when we do our quarter inch seam that those lines are straight. 
I don't want the lines apart like this or like this. We want them in line with each other so when we sew. The other thing, um, if you're working with stripes, this is also a point where you can take that into consideration. I just got lucky with this. Um, I didn't do anything special. I think it's just the um, size of the stripe working out with the pattern. Um, and cutting it on a bias, it sort of lines it up well. I can't pick up the pin. Okay, so that's how we do these inside seams. Now the outside seams are a bit different because it's going to come to an end at the seam line. So right here is my quarter inch, and that's where I'm going to begin sewing. So I'm going to put a pin in here. So when I sew this, this is my quarter inch, that's going to open and I'll have my strip. Let's do it over here as well. So again, we can see that blue line. This edge lines up right there nice and even at a quarter inch and I will pin this. All right, now we are going to sew a one quarter inch from cut edge to cut edge. We don't obviously need to sew these end pieces, but we want to cut from here to here. Excuse me, no cutting, no cutting yet. We want to sew from here to here um, to get our quarter inch seam. And then when we do that, we're going to end up with a loop. But our loop is going to have a cut edge right here where it's going to line up and that's where we're going to get our binding. So let me go ahead and sew this. Um, I do have one that's already sewn. Let me show you that one. This is one I did the right way. Um, but I already had this other piece sewn, so I couldn't really show it to you um, beforehand because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six strips. And that's one more than what you would have gotten if you did an 18 inch square. So that's why I did it, just to get that extra piece. So we've lined up this one. Um, this is the first seam right here because this is nice and straight. You can see my lines are straight. That's my first seam. I cut it, I crossed it over, and I sewed it at an angle right here. And if you look at this, you can see how these lines are lining up. And when I sew it, I sew right into that open corner, just like I did over here. And so this straight edge lines up with this edge, and that's what we're going to cut. Now, there are some fancy things you can do um, to use a rotary cutter, and some people, you know, pre-cut these, sort of like what I did, but they don't cut it all the way to the edge. And if you cut from here to here, then you just have to come back and clip. That gets messy for me, because I have all these loose pieces, and I'm just afraid they're going to get twisted and tangled. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this so I can show you what it's going to look like. And then, I am, we'll get this cut. And then we'll be finished. Oh my goodness, this is really is a quick and easy process as long as you do it correctly. Do it the way you're supposed to. <laughs> that's, that's always my rule. Do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Despite my snafu, um, this is what it should look like. Uh, I want to show you the finished one so you know exactly what you're going to have. You'll have a T seam that'll be right here where this goes diagonal. Both of these seams are on the straight of the grain. They are not sewn on the bias. And that's what makes this really nice because you don't have to worry about stretching as you're sewing this. Now, you do need to be careful on this bias edge because it is going to be more stretchy. But if you're doing small pieces or anything with a curve, you need to be able to have that, that flex, that bit of stretch in there. Now, what I do want you to also see, let's see, I guess this is kind of in reverse, um, that this works out the same way. So I did these, these, uh, this seam here across those, those uh, seams that I showed you, the drawn lines and the edge. Now, I went ahead and did the same with this one. 
And what I did is because there were only two strips, I only join it right here and I'm going to get that extra on each end. So let me show you how this looks. So what we do is now we can cut. <laughs> we come in with the scissors and we cut across the line just like this. And this is going to be your outer seam. So if you're not perfect, you're pretty much okay. And then when you come here, you're going to trim right off to there. And now look at this, you have this nice long piece of seam binding that's cut on the bias. And I can come in and sew this right onto this edge piece and get my full width. So even though I got a little bit, what do I want to say, excited and jumped ahead more than I should, it's easier for me to cut on this side, um, it's all still going to work just fine. So let me sew, cut this around. And that's how this works. Um, it's a great option if you're new to binding. Well, let me say, this is probably not one of the first projects you want to do only because you're sewing in multiple directions and your quarter inch seam is going to matter and you need to line them up on an angle. Um, and all that is similar to half square triangles, which isn't the best first option. You want to start with just simple squares. Once you have your quarter inch seam allowance down and you can sew consistently with that quarter inch seam, this will be a breeze. Um, like I said, don't cut too early because that's going to, you know, complicate situations. But all I do is I, I just, you know, come through, go around this, and I'm going to have quite a few yards. Oh, actually, you know what? I need to measure this because I have not measured, whoops, what this comes out as finished. There's my line. So I have, let's see, this piece here. I'm going to go to 36, so that'll be one yard. Whoops, I got things knocking over everywhere. Two yards. And here's my two and two thirds. And then I'm going to bring this in and I'll overlap that, which brings me to my third yard. And wow. So that's four yards, four plus a bit. So that's great. That's quite a bit of binding. Um, that's going to do a lot and uh, do a lot of quilting for you. So there it is. I'll go ahead and get this sewn up, excuse me, cut up, and then I'm going to add it to the projects I'm working on. Phew, I'm glad we got through this. This was a challenge, but you see if you make a mistake how to fix it. And I promise you, I do not do these things on purpose. I wish I had the wherewithal to know how to do that. It just comes naturally. Maybe that's why I know how to fix mistakes so easily. Thank you for following along. It's been a pleasure having you. And uh, get some binding ready because we have a lot of quilting pieces we're going to be finishing up here shortly. Have a great day. Thank you again for being here.